I don't know, I smoked a lot of weed in like senior year and I didn't really get caught. One of the things that's like, that's baffling to me with Broad City is like, it seems like at least your persona of when you smoke weed is you have like a fun persona. But my, in my experience, when I smoke weed, I'm like paranoid, I'm anxious. Oh, that's I'm what like, I'm talking about my standup right now. It's like being a stoner parent and like, I just can't smoke a lot anymore. Very, very little. And no, I, I have a, I, I'm, this is part of my standup, but I panic every time. I've yeah. never smoked. I've, I've never smoked weed <laughs> without having a panic attack first. Oh my gosh. Every single time. No way. Every, every time you smoke. Every single time, Mike Birbiglia. Okay, I looked it up. I was like, when did we meet? I think it was Vulture Comedy Festival 2014. I, I actually can't believe it's only 10 years because I've been doing comedy for 17, 17. That makes sense. And I'm surprised it took us seven years to meet. I saw you, I think we just missed each other at UCB. And then I saw you, I saw your show, I saw Broad City. My relationship with Broad City was, oh, it's my, sec it's my secret favorite show. It's my secret favorite show that Thanks. nobody knows about. Yeah. And then little to my surprise, <laughs> I host the Vulture uh, Festival. I think it was like the first ever one they did. And it was Billy Eichner and you and Abby and the ovation for the two of you <laughs> was madness. It was pandemonium. Yeah, I don't it more. But so like, when I saw, so I loved your show in that way. Like it made me like cry laughing. And then I hosted that show yes. and people went nuts. And I was like, oh, gotcha. Okay, this is like a mega thing. And I'm just curious, like, did, was there a moment where you realized this little thing, the project you and Abby put together, like, was a, a thing? When I knew it was big was when uh, Amy Poehler said she would feature in our final webisode. Oh. We made 35 short films in two years. We were jub obsessed, yeah. And then, and because we came through uh, UCB, the school, which Amy was one of the four founders of, yeah. we uh, asked Anthony King, who had been one of our teachers, to ask her because he had been her teacher um, to to forward like a respectful email, asking her to be in it, and she had already seen the web series and knew about us. Oh, that that was that like. That was it. And then when she like said she would feature in the web series, I was like, we were like, me and Abby were like, this is huge. This wow. is huge in such a way that it's like, that was the accomplishment. Yeah. You know? And then I'm even thinking about her uh, wanting to executive produce. You know what? It wasn't even that she wanted to. It was that we met for lunch and she came with a legal pad of notes on the webisodes. Oh my God. That was like another moment too, where it was like, what the fuck? This rules. You know yeah. I mean? Like, I'm just such a comedy nerd forever. Totally. Forever, for the, it's my spirituality. I literally do connect it to my Jewish faith. It's like so just the best. So so Amy, like with her legal pad, that was it. The legal pad. We were like. <gasps> <laughs> That's so funny. Legal pad. And then the actual um, like external like perception of the project feeling successful was the series order. Like just couldn't. It's just like, oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, when Comedy Central agreed to make it as a series. Yeah, and we had sold it to FX as a script. The process was a year before they canned it. <laughs> oh. And then Comedy Central had originally wanted it, but it was actually a positive thing to go somewhere else, not marry your high school boyfriend, but to go somewhere else yeah. and then return and be like, actually, you are a good guy. Aww. Um, And we like came back smarter and stronger to Comedy <laughs> Central, and it was like, a, a I think, a more... Um, secure and fruitful partnership that we built five seasons off of. So it really was, it really was a good thing. But anyway, that was just nuts. A season, yeah. a season, the first season, you know, even the, it was just shocking and like so weird in life. Like you have, you have a daughter, I have, I have a daughter, you have no idea what it actually, the actual personal private experience is going to yeah. feel like. And we had no idea what we were in, in for. What was the moment where you were just like, yeah, we're just going to make our own thing. We kept getting rejected from getting on Herald teams yeah. at UCB. And then you were just like, we're, was, we I, know we're funny. Yeah. And I was like always kind of <laughs> half into it because I was doing sketch and stand up at the same time, too. And I, I was never that good at 
improv when I did it. I haven't done it in so long, but um, I, so I wasn't like so committed, but Abby had like gone to school for acting and then Mm. pivoted to improv. So it was like a, that was, she was, I think more committed to that structure, but then I was kind of more quickly like, oh, fuck it. Who fucking cares? Let's make our own thing. Yeah. But Abby had like a bigger like, yeah, let's make our own thing. And I think the combo of like a chill, let's make our own thing. And like really, um, uh, I don't know. That's what. Fired up version yeah. of it was like such a great, uh, great place for us. And, and we just took it so seriously. We made 35 short films That's in two a years. Lot. Yeah, we were really, um, really obsessed. Yeah. Really obsessed. Oh, it's interesting. It's like that's I always use on the on the show the word obsessed, mm. which is like that's what I think good comedy and stand up is. But like what are you uh, when you go cool. on stage right now, like what are you obsessed with? Like what's the what's the subject that you find yourself drawn to the most? Well, my like hour right now is quite quite set. I'm doing like I'm I'm maybe making little tweaks and then you know, I'll look back at four shows and after a bunch of tweaks, I'm like, oh, that's actually like, we're now 10% different. Yeah. You know, it, it, it is continuing to change just so that I don't um, feel like death on stage. But right now, what I'm obsessed with is enjoying being a parent. Yeah. Like the, you know, I, I the stories I've been told about what having a kid looks and feels like. Yeah what being a parent looks and feels like are so far from um, my experience. Yeah. And I'm like really um, actually in contrast to like focusing on my personal private experience, I think a lot about like the white supremacist capitalist patriarchy. And um, you know, that that is meaningful to a point, but then, okay, what about you and your life and your body? I'm asking myself all the time. Yeah. I can't figure out what the, um, the purpose of, I hate being a parent. I hate being a mom. I can't figure out what that narrative serves yeah. in this structure. I'm like, why is that the only, why is that the only thing I've heard about being a mom? That you're a dour, like a dour cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what show you're watching, but I gotta tune into that. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Where it's just like, I don't know, like even like March Simpson's like, I mean, and I love it and relate to it. and. I, I, whatever, her like, mm. oh, right, right, right. You know, and I love it and it's whatever, right. iconic or whatever, but I'm just like, right. Why is that? Why has that been the thing? My, my, right. why wife, are the tropes the tropes? Yeah, this trope in particular. Like, why is it that it sucks? Why is that, <laughs> why is that the like thing I've heard the most? Right. What I don't even get what that serves, like in the profit structure that we live in. I don't really get why, um, Everybody's like, my kids are annoying. I'm like, yeah, kids are high need individuals. (laughs) And like, um, you know, like uh, making a baby in your body is hard, but I I just don't, I don't really get. um, So anyway, I'm obsessed with like actually taking great joy and pleasure in my parenting experience. I love that. It's different than what I've heard. What's your favorite thing about it? I guess the organic need for constant presence Mm. it's like truly why i had a kid i didn't do it for her certainly um but i was like i really want this experience of being present yeah i think that's actually why like she's uh two years and seven months i think at this point that's why i'm like now finally getting it about taking pleasure in the moment to moment which is still a practice for me after being so anxious for so many years and living in the future or whatever. Yeah. But um, I love that, that it's just like, it just feels like there's nothing else going on. It yeah. feels like, like um, you know, just like when you're young and stoned and with your friends and you're like, man, there's nothing else going on anywhere else in the world. Yeah. And kind of that feeling of comedy and being part of a scene, like yeah. just feeling like, just so the scope being so um limited to like pretty much your bodily experience do you have like anything where you're because i have a ton of stuff like this but like where you're trying to parent in a different way from your parents and the way that you're trying to parent similarly to your parents Hmm. 
How do you try to parent similarly to your parents? Well, my mom is just, I always say to Una, like, you know, I just want you to know that like mom and I like unconditionally love you. And it's really important that you know that. And I tell her it a lot. <laughs> I love it. And that's and that's, that's like sweet. what my mom was like. Oh, so sweet. When I was growing up and mm -hmm. and she oh. didn't she didn't say that, but we felt it. You know what I mean? Right. Like she was just deeply kind. And you say it too. No? And I say it. Yeah. And I think that's and that's and that's the way I'm different. Mm -hmm. Is I, I vocalize it a little bit more. Mm -hmm so that it's clear so i don't know that's sort of my version of it and also and and on the you know and on the other side like i don't shout mm -hmm. it, there was a lot of <laughs> shouting in my childhood yeah. <laughs> Do you have siblings yeah i'm youngest of four. Oh fuck yeah how many boys and girls not to so be so, it, so it would go <laughs> sorry <laughs> so it would go like so it's me and then my brother joe who i work with and was one of the producers on this show and um then my sister patty and my sister gina cool which was, yeah, it was an interesting way to grow up because like when I, when I was a kid, when I was like five, you know, my sisters were teenagers and it was just wild. Damn. It was wild. Teenage girls. Yeah, I know. And it was Did wild. Did they like take care of you? Did they love it? Yeah. My sister Gina oh. was in some ways kind of like my second mother. Yeah. That is so cool. <laughs> it was wild. That's fucking cool. Where'd you grow up? Massachusetts, like suburban Massachusetts. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. Gina and Patty. Gina, Patty, Joe, and Mike. Oh, my God. So what are you... You're dodging the question by asking me the question, but... Well, I did really need an example answer? at first because I was like, aren't we trying to do nothing? Our parents did no, but my parents were, like, really lovely, and um, I'm doing a lot like them. Uh, one thing that comes to mind is, like, my parents were so... Uh, my parents were never, like, violently gendering us. Mm -hmm. I grew up on Long Island in the 90s, and it was very... And with, like, Italians, um, not not Jews. I grew up with mostly Italians, and it was very like, look at her, oh she's gorgeous. Yeah. Look at her. Look at the dress. It was like very like yes. um, weirdly Jean Benet like sexualizing <laughs> like young girls to like again look like women or whatever. So fucking weird. What a bizarre instinct that was rampant. And yeah. I was like wearing my brother Elliot uh, his like umbro shorts. I was like wearing all his clothes. Yeah. And. Um, and we were just like <laughs> little like queer Jews just um, doing our thing, like making we like my brother's a comedian and we made comedy videos yeah. since we were kids. We were we were Aww. we were free in that way, free in, in those like and it was like so weirdly not intentional, not a thing that my parents thought of. But my mom always thought it was gross. That was like the word like it's like gross the way I don't know, like little girls like forced in tights and dresses yeah i just thought that was so my brother and i still like um marvel at that instinct and the unconsciousness of it, it was so cool um it's such a com complicated thing because i i feel similarly about how culturally people will in our extended family or friends mm. be like your daughter's so beautiful and yeah yeah like, yeah but the Let's not focus mm. on, you know what I mean? Well, you know, that's like an interesting thing. I've recently, which I didn't like hear a lot. I've recently just been saying, baby, you are so gorgeous. You are so beautiful. And that's it. And yeah. I, I'll tell her she's beautiful. But what freaks me out is when people start like disembodying her and commenting on her body. Yeah. Because I'm like beautiful. It feels um, to me cohesive from the inside out. Yes. You are beautiful. You are just through a and gorgeous, through. shining person. But um, I find it so weird how people will come on, comment on pieces of her. Yeah. Are. Oh. So you work with your you worked with your brother and then on Broad City with your brother, right? Yeah, and, and Elliot, I did too. I might worked with my brother since I was in college. Yeah, my brother um, Elliot uh, played my brother on Broad City. Yeah. He wrote on Broad City too, um, but my favorite was him playing my brother. It was so funny and fun. And you did comedy together, like as a kid. Did, was yeah. he older than you? Yeah, he Elliot's you? four years older than me, and we made tons of. That was like our childhood was like sketch videos. Yeah. And that was such a cool thing too. Like I always felt bad when people's dads were dicks. <laughs> sure. You know, it sucks. And our dad was such not a dick and he had a, a camera that he just let us use. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And we just were like obsessed. And I was just like 
put me in coach i was really elliot's yeah muse <laughs> what's interesting like you like with broad city it feels like when i'm watching <laughs> the episode about like uh you got you, you know you and abby disconnecting from technology and like going out into the world and all that stuff it feels like it's based in a truth like yes. based in something that happened yeah. and then you're like and then we're gonna go nuts with this yeah what was the thing that was from broad city that from your persona that wasn't really like you in real life uh the like whole essence i mean not really but i'm like i was i was so i have been so anxious and depressed for so long mm -hmm. and 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 during broad city we're like running we were the showrunners you know just yeah. us two who were also the stars and we had we were the head writers like we were so stressed yeah and then you know we almost like curated these experiences so that we could let go and just be these shitheads right but we were like so responsible like so responsible to a fault like hurting ourselves so responsible and then yeah. feeling like ugh, like imprisoned you know and it's like and we had so much fun and it, it was a miracle it was a miracle that the show the show you know what i mean like just like such a miracle and the experience was like so rich but you know but also there was um my my husband jokes that I like blacked out all of Broad City so that I could like be the person that I really wanted to be because she was so um light, you know? I, I think I'm a lot heavier than right. than her. And when you talk about like recycling stories or whatever, like I'm so I've been so focused. Broad City ended five years ago. I've been so focused on looking forward. Yeah. And like understanding who I am beyond Alana Wexler yeah. and and in that embracing who I am like her. I mean, I am, I am love the absurdity in any mundane situation. Yeah. I am sex forward and sex positive and fluid in my sexuality and gender. And it is important to me in, to, to know that I am, I do like love my friends like too much at times, you right. know, um, like so much it's, it's, she's so based on me, but I think I guess I'm speaking to the personal private experience of being like, ugh, I crack up like this. Uh, in the first season, we were uh, so nervous. And I was 27 mm -hmm. running a TV show. You know what I mean? Like, it's unbelievable. It's it's bizarre. And I was chain smoking in the stairwell. I'd be like, guys, I'll be right back. We're in the bathroom. And I would chain smoke <laughs> <laughs> in the stairwell and then go brush my teeth and then hand sanitize. And then be like, hey, guys, just to a dump. Oh. And now I'm back. What's up? Like, I, it was like so, so stressful. So, so looking forward and creating new stories in stand up and in TV and movies, I think what I'm more taking from is the behind the scenes experience. Yeah. High stakes, stress, work like what adulthood what you think adulthood means yeah versus what it actually really yeah. means which is containing yourself owning your feelings and your actions and your experience you know like that that is what i'm taking but what actually made it into the show i i certainly don't consciously do it but sometimes we're like oh was that a joke on Broad city it's okay <laughs> you know like it's fine uh, and it's in a new context but but I think my intention is to like keep moving forward. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, when I work, when I worked at, I think I worked a day on your show as, or a few days, as Abby's high school teacher. Who's trying to fuck her? <laughs> Who's trying to fuck her? We, I think, connected on Bumble or like a fake Bumble mm. app or whatever. And, Hilarious. And then we go on a date, and uh, it's. I mean, I love that episode, it, and it was so fun. And you, oh, it, was it was interesting. So you and fun. But you and Abby, like, I, I didn't feel the anxiety you're Good. describing. Like, I was just like, this is one of the best sets I've ever been on. This is fun. Well, for us, I think it was like, once we were on set, we were like um, basketball players mm -hmm. at the game. <laughs> so the adrenaline was like, woo! You know what I mean? It wasn't. It wasn't the anxiety of like. I think we should probably rewrite this over the weekend so that we can just have them ready on Monday morning. You know, we were like too good of students in that way. And so, um, so such like women moving through the world thinking we're in trouble and having to do more work than we're actually supposed to be doing. And then it ends up that 
that's fucking us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like not not having boundaries with, within ourselves is fucking us. But like on set, like, yeah, we, we ran such a joyous set. This is called the slow round. Uh, what are people's favorite and least favorite thing about you? Why do you call it the slow round? Because it's like, you know, in shows, there's like the speed round. Right, right. We'd like to slow it down. I love it. <laughs> as love long it. as the answer is, is how long it'll be. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What are people's favorite and least favorite things about me? Like, mo like most favorite, I'm imagining it's like the positive energy I bring, which is... I get that. Little to their knowledge, like somewhat of a compulsion. So, <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm like... Jokes on them. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's probably it I, I i enjoy but then also compulsively need to um provide encouraging energy but i think i think people enjoy that um and i, I think it's safe to say i do okay cool count it cool great and then least favorite um i'm actually like thinking about my family and not just my husband but like my parents like Ugh, there's like a compulsive energy that I can bring that's obsessive that's um and anxious I think that's it I think when I'm like you know what that that is it and this is mostly my for my husband but when I'm anxiously trying to control control things sure. but not saying what I'm feeling and what I need out of the situation but sort of trying to shape it so that it abates my anxiety mm -hmm. That's got to be the most annoying fucking thing. Um, not that I just do, but one of the most annoying things in the world. And like a tiny, tiny version of systemic oppression. It's like really annoying. You know what I mean? When people are trying to control you mm. in ways and shape it and not just be like, we want this. Right. Will you give it to me and accept the an if the answer is no? Um, and that actually relates to the thing we were talking about, like true adulthood. These like stories I'm finding myself being drawn to of like, the outside perception of adulthood that we try to fill versus true adulthood, which is like owning what your feelings are, asking for what you need, yeah. and then accepting the uncertainty that you don't control shit. So right. you do have to accept and then feel whatever feelings you have about not right. getting the thing you want. Um, that's gotta be one of my worst qualities. It's really similar to a joke that I'm working on right now, which is, like I, I feel like I use a lot of the terminology of AA, but I'm, I've never had a drinking problem. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm always like one day at a time. Uh -huh. we, we cannot control things that are outside of our control. Yeah. And I was like, and I'm like, maybe I should start drinking. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I get to like, soak it up a right, little bit. Right, you know, right. Get the get the perks. It's interesting you're saying that though. It's like it's this idea of like you control. You're attempting to control a thing Ugh. you you can't control anything that's the, tr the reality of the whole of the whole damn thing is you, you none of us are in control of anything it's all chaos all the time and it's like yeah i i agree with you which is like all you can do is state your actual intentions of what you would like to be the outcome to be and it's I, it gets sticky when you don't state your intentions and see this is like what i'm talking about with like um, I always jump to the outside of the imperialist white supremacist capitalist patriarchy, as Bell Hooks puts it. She talks about the interlocking sy systems of oppression instead of just saying that patriarchy. So this power structure that we live in, you know, why? Can you say it's slower. Okay, the imperialist. Got white, it. White supremacist. Okay. Capitalist. Okay. Patriarchy. Four things. This is a phrase Bell Hooks used to interlock the systems of oppression instead of just being like racism or misogyny. It's like, oh, all these things work in concert. So for example, the fucking embryos shit that just came out and abortion, let's just talk about it. It's like uh, as, as one thing of controlling women's bodies. Um, and of course it relates to uh, racism as well. So it's a, a racist, misogynist desire. Why is it that this is being legislated and women's bodies are being controlled rather than just hearing from these Republicans, I want to control women's bodies. Right, right. I wish I could. Oh, how much would I pay for a ticket to that show? But like then why and then the whole world, this whole power structure that I just named, the whole power structure is designed for this thing that I'm saying I don't want to do on a personal level. They're, they're, they're legislating a thing that they don't want to ostensibly uh, admit that they yeah. want to occur, which is controlling something that does not belong to them. Exactly. Exactly. Right? And how like weirdly, like I don't get why people who do like 
the, if you said you're racist, I don't have a racist bone in my body, Trump said. And it's like, everybody knows you've always been so <laughs> violently racist. Right. Why? Right. Like, I don't get... All the way back to, like, Central Park 5. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So there's, a lot, there's a paper trail on that one. Yeah. Yeah, that you paid for to put yeah. in the paper. Yeah. Why? I, I don't... It, it's so weird. It's like, um, it's just so... It's so weird. Can you think of a time where you're bringing compulsive excitement in an instance? I have, like, some stories I've developed in this hour that are good and but I've, it's taken me years to develop them yeah of but i'm course. not i'm not really like a storyteller where so like it, the way i think more is like in themes so i don't really have like the one time but what i what i am thinking of is like i compliment people mm. and i think part of it is my desire to be complimented it's part part of it is my hope that they'll like me more but mm. also part of it is like i i genuinely love people and yeah. love the way they present and love the things that shine about people, right. but all of the things are, all of these things are true. And I'm trying to be like, okay, it's it, it's also just like, it's a lot, you know, like we're saying with our daughters, like don't comment on their bodies. Like I, I used to comment so much on people's looks and, and everything, like stop commenting on people, just be with them. Right. So that's, that's a, maybe I can't give you like a story of the time. I can't think of it right now right. of the time that I did it at, but like, that's an example where I'm just like, even if it's true, and I, I hope a person feels how much I like them, they'll feel it. You don't have to say it. Chill, yeah. chill out. Yeah. Um, so annoying. <laughs> so annoying to myself. Do you, what's the best piece of advice anyone's given you that you used? Amy Poehler, very early on, said, treat yourself like your own daughter. Oh. Gold. Gold. Treat yourself like your own daughter. It's beautiful. Oof. Yeah, that like an inner child work is really coming up in people's, not in my therapy, but I'm just hearing about it a lot, people talking about it. And um, she was ahead of the game on that one. Yeah, and it was like, uh, you know, I think I've been doing it for, for really doing it now, but in my 20s, I really needed to hear that. Yeah. Especially like, again, like Broad City was so magical and amazing, but also harsh. Yeah. intense and intense responsibility a harshness to it that um it was nice to hear that like gentleness come from her it was helpful oh um what nicknames have you been given in your life that were good or bad Ooh, lons oh lons. that's nice lons is good i love lons yeah my college my i had two friends in college uh matt Spear and john mayer jonathan mayer not um john <laughs> Body is a Wonderland. Yeah, Lons was is one of my faves. <laughs> Lons is nice. Do you have a bad nickname? <laughs> Are you laughing at it in advance? From the same ones, anus. Oh, anus. <laughs> Not because of any personal truth, but Elanus, and then just shorten to anus. <laughs> oh my god. Matt would be that's like hard, anus, uh, <laughs> and I would be like what in a like a bar i'm like blushing it's very funny oh my gosh anus <laughs> that's a lot <laughs> that's a that's a say, lot of a nickname i don't think i've ever heard you say anus and we've known each other only for 10 years <laughs> I thought longer. but it's like so nice to hear you say anus today um <laughs> is there do you remember so, as a kid doing anything bad and getting away with it Ooh, the one time i did something bad i didn't get away with it um convinced my friend to swim in her pool when her parents weren't home. Oh, I'm very mad bad. at my former self now for that. For that? Because that's dangerous. Yeah. Could have been with her little brother too. We were and eighth, she got busted. We were like in eighth grade and Dominic was in sixth grade or something or fifth grade. It was dangerous, but we got caught. I think that's What was their punishment? For Jenna, yeah, not for me. What was the punishment? Just my Do you know what the guilt. punishment? It was my punishment. <laughs> Do you know what the no, punishment was? No, I don't. No, okay. But I, I don't know, I smoked a lot of weed in like senior year and I didn't really get caught when you one of the things that's like that's baffling to me with Broad City is like it seems like at least your persona of when you smoke weed is you have like a fun persona but my in my experience when I smoke weed I'm like paranoid I'm anxious oh, that's I'm what like, I'm talking about my stand-up right now is like being a stoner parent and like I just can't smoke a lot anymore. Very, very little. And no, I, I have a, I, I'm, this is part of my standup, but I panic every time. I've yeah. never smoked, I've, I've never <laughs> smoked good without having a panic attack first. Oh my gosh. Like it's insane. Thousands and thousands of times. I have never, 
Like a full panic attack. Uh, not full. Like a piece, a, a piece of panic. A piece of panic for yeah. sure. Every single time. No way. Every, Every time you smoke. Every single time, Mike Birbiglia. Then what is the incentive? I don't know. It's like, um, okay, again, this is like all for my stand-up. So if you hear it another time, yeah. hear it, here it is. But um, it's a practice. Okay. It's a faith. <laughs> okay. Where you have the faith to keep going. Right. And the absurdity with which once you finally get over the peak and you're like, you silly bitch. Right. You funny bitch. You got yourself in this situation again, you dumb bitch. That's when it's like bad. And then you're like, ha, 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 ha. I don't know. It's a trip. It's just like a little experience to have with yourself. Um, but I do it so much with, with, with a lot more care and thought now. Okay. Do you, have you tried ayahuasca? Because that feels like that's what you're describing is what my friends who try ayahuasca are describing. I mean, it's just like on making a, a commitment to an idea of right. like, I'm going to do this enveloping right. thing. Well, now, like, I'll do like a little edibles, a little. And um, if, you know, if I do the right amount, it can be just like a lovely little thing or whatever. Um, and I'm really into this weed drink. Uh, but but it's got to be a little bit. Do you do mushrooms? No. Have you ever? I did. I mean, I did them in high school a couple times, like and partying the, or whatever. Yeah, and I was just like, no, this is maybe not for me. Like, yeah. I, my whole thing with I, I, this is on one of my albums, but like, like I'm the least fun person to smoke pot with. I'm like the person who I get who, it. Who's just like, do you guys hate me? Why does uh -huh. my heart hurt? Is that rickets? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's just not fun. Hilarious. <laughs> so I just yeah. stopped doing Hilarious. it. Yeah. And then, and, yeah. then, and then even like this is a thing that I want to do in my stand up down the road, but I, I haven't even found the joke for it. It's like. Jenny and I, my wife and I don't even smoke pot together because early on we went to Bonnaroo Festival in Tennessee and we smoked pot and we like got lost and then got in a fight with each other. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like we've never smoked pot again. Yeah. Yeah. We're just like, no, you told us to go that way. You know what I mean? <laughs> So like we just don't, and we're always like, we always have these moments where we're like, we should smoke pot. And then like, we think about what happened last time and then we don't. Yeah. Yeah. Last time. That's so funny. Like 15 years ago. Or yeah. Something. Were you performing also? Yeah. Yeah. Oof. So you never did it again? No. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many things like that in marriage. Yeah. You do it once. You're like, all right, we're good on that. Yeah. We did it. We Check. Kind of, we kind of figured out what I feel like over the years, we've been married 15 years, been together like. 20 like i feel like you figure out what you fundamentally enjoy doing like i feel like with jenny and i it's like we like like going to movies and plays and then like talking about them for hours Love it. and it's like I, there's no one is there's no one's opinion of things that i want to hear more than my <laughs> wife's like i'd rather hear her take on a movie than martin scorsese that's the best what's the thing with your husband that you do that's like a standby you know what we are like constantly doing <laughs> is intending to self-actualize and doing it we're just like really into therapy and talking mm -hmm. about just talking we just talk and talk and talk that seems good it's lit and yeah. we don't do much else i think we have pretty separate social lives um and mine is like 10 times as social as his is oh he's more of an introvert yeah He's like, I saw this, he's like a, a, a computational scientist. Yeah. Which I didn't even, it's so sophisticated, I didn't even know what that meant. It's like um, molecular modeling of Okay, lost proteins. me again, once yeah. again, lost like, me again. Like, imagine like a video game uh, where, where it's like, um, what is it? It's like, I guess, kind of like Star Wars video game at Disney and you're yeah. like sitting in the seat and you're like going through asteroids and shit but the asteroids are proteins and he's like <laughs> mapping out the surface of proteins to All right. try to design drugs to dock into those proteins wow. and he has a, a like biotech startup so he's in that holy cow world and he's just like a yeah like a really brilliant beautiful weird scientist so you guys are really into like sort of uh, sort of going to therapy and like talking through like your relationship and your relationship with the world and all that kind of stuff yeah and and now with our kid we're having so much fun with the experience and talking about it <laughs> that's great yeah it's awesome and like also just really trying to refine it so we can be as just present and chill as possible and my anxiety and desire to control things doesn't um fuck shit up too much do you talk about that a lot 
Yeah, constantly. <laughs> Every day. Do you ever feel judged by it? Like you ever? Yeah. And I'm like, shut up. And then I'm like, no, you're right. You're right. That was annoying. And also the thing is like that my agita is um, creating agitation in the in the scene. It really does. What scene? In our in our situation. Okay. You know, of getting her to bed. My desire for her to just go to sleep, which is not how it fucking works. And it's right. like, well, just chill. Go through the process. Be present let go of the idea of the clock and it's just going to happen naturally. Yeah. You know, it's like um, how it is. This is the material section of the show. It's half-baked things. These are from the notebook. And if you have stuff from your notebook, feel free to throw it out too. So I wrote this down and, and it's in some ways that I look at this and I go like, oh, this is a premise, but it's just a funny thing. I, but it doesn't have a joke, which is I did. I was at this yoga place and the yoga teacher kept saying to me it doesn't matter how it looks it just matters how it feels <laughs> so she's like telling you it doesn't look too good yeah yeah hilarious Isn't that great you're like thank you and she said it so many times and i just no multiple I, times yeah yeah oh bitch she kept saying it bitch I get it. I get it. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. It don't look too good. Damn. No. Damn. So that was like one Is of the. Is this a regular, your regular yoga place? No. So when I'm touring, like I'll go, I'll look on Yelp. I'll see what is good yoga. I'll look at the photos and like, and I'll find a, a place. And then like, but yeah. So she said that. And then. And then I wrote it down another thing, which is um, at the end, I thanked her for the class. And she said, I promise you that was as enjoyable for me as it was for you. <laughs> Whoa. And I, and I wrote down, I know it's not in the spirit of yoga, but I thought, I don't need you to enjoy this. Like, I don't even want you to. Jobs should be hard. You know what I mean? That's right. I was like, you should, maybe you should pay me if it was so fun. Like she, and yeah, it was kind of, um, and I, I think one of the tags was like, I'm feeling really inspired now. Like, I think this should be like no money, like not a transaction between us. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Do you have a, do you have anything in your notebook that's sort um, of like a, in my notes app. So I haven't been doing, thought? I haven't been working out new material i kind of stay pretty focused on the thing um and then i just wanted to write this one thing down that's funny my optimism is just anxiety and we already talked about that my optimism is just anxiety is a great line uh yeah i love that oh great that's great that's great um uh wait can you say more about that what does it say Whew. My optimism is just anxiety and depression. I'm depressed about the state of the world and then have the compulsion to negate it. My optimism is my anxiety choking out my depression. I think that's great. Thank you. It's um, really tight, too. It's a really... I thought you were joking. You're not joking? Yeah, I'm serious. What cool. do you mean? Like, I think that's great. <laughs> I don't know. No, um, I think that seems really good. Oh, cool. Well, because it's such a concise thought. And it's also like, I don't know. I just think it's like an interesting uh observation about the self-contradictions that are existing like constantly mm. like because what you're describing are like two things that seem in opposition to each other but are actually like mutually like See, related i have a lot of trouble with stand up that's why i'm so shocked that i'm enjoying it so much it's like hard for me to know i think because you know i, I was trying everything when i was younger improv sketch and stand up at the same time when broad city took hold i'm very confident about making a TV show and running it. You yeah. Know? But like stand up, I'm still like, you're joking. You like it? Oh like gosh. I'm still so, so it's like, I like literally thought you were joking. It's funny that that was recorded. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Thanks, Mike. No, I love that. Um, and it like to me, I'm, I guess that's like more of like the point of something, right? But I don't have the like a bit around it. Right. Where well, I'm like, I think I would, I would back into that truth. Perhaps. Well, I think like what, I think what you need to fill it out and a lot of times like i'll write down something like that that's like an observation or a feeling and then i'll find the example of it in my life or i'll have an example in my life with the yoga thing where it's like i don't even really have the observation yet i just have the thing that happens uh -huh, uh -huh. but like i feel like if you paired that with an experience right, that's right, like it right that would completely become a bit because it's super relatable right like something like lighter and tangible just real like just something real from your life that like is an example of that or like right. you might think about like literally like when you wrote that down like what was the how did it occur right. to you right 
Yeah, I, I don't. Know. I don't know what that was. <laughs> um, another one is um, the self checkout. It so this to me is feels like more a standard stand up bit, and I'm less feeling less vulnerable sharing it just to share the emotional context around it is um self-checkout at airports i'm i'm training to become a cashier now <laughs> i'm not a cashier <laughs> pay a human being to do the job i need a human to do yeah i'm not a cashier if i were i would work here right and like the the truth of it certainly relates to the imperialist white supremacist capitalist patriarchy where it's like we're all working for free you know what I mean? Like, I, I, listen, I could do the um, the bottom line about how it falls into to late stage capitalism more easily than the other joke, finding the personal anecdote. But what the fuck is that about? I'm I'm checking out my it's my so strange. Luna bar. I'm scanning the barcode of I my can't, Luna bar. I can't tell you how many times I've been at CVS and it's not scanning, and I'm just like, should I just steal this? <laughs> Would that be kinder to the f fuck the corporation? But would that be kinder to the person? Then I'm like, help, help! It won't scan. It's like so annoying for everybody. Why don't we just have healthcare for everybody? It's so stupid. I'm desperate for the interaction. I get in a lift. Yeah. I'm like, hey, how are you today? Anything you want to tell me? I'm just like desperate for human interaction. I mean, as a as a baseline, but it's just I'm not a cashier. I was a bagger. <laughs> or they called us bundlers at Super Stop and Shop when bundlers, I was in high school. Bundlers, really yeah, cute. Yeah. And um, so nice. I wanted to be a cashier, but they would they wouldn't promote me. Why? I don't know. I was like, I want to be cashier, and they're like, No, nah, we're not looking for those right now. Oh. I was like, All right, cool, yeah, cool. Thanks. But anyway. I knew some cashiers. I knew some cashiers. Very cool. And now, like, no one's a cashier. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's like cashiers aren't cashiers. Cashiers aren't cashiers. They're cashier assistants. Yeah bundlers but man i'm pretty good at bundling i'll be honest with you nice. like i went to whole foods the other day with my wife and daughter and you know i know that i know the heavy stuff goes on the bottom Full. love <laughs> um, i love no i have such a system i know colds go with colds yeah, baby. you know nice Ooh, i don't really do based on temperature but i go to that oh. whole foods too and yeah. i'm bagging my ass off oh yeah i gotta write uh, assistant i gotta write one of those things down no that's great cashiers aren't cashiers they're assistants to like patron cashiers, I don't know, something. But I like, yeah, I think that's great. Um, I wrote this down, which is when I was in ninth grade, one day after gym class, I had forgotten my towel and um, <laughs> <laughs> the policy, this is the all boys Catholic school in Massachusetts. Ugh, the scary. policy was that the gym teacher would hand you paper towels one by one if you forgot your towel. And I'm dying. So I, this happened. <laughs> and you wiped happened. your body with paper towels handed that to me a by a man. Yeah. handed to you. Yeah, just Gross. this man Holt handing me paper towels. Ooh, and, um, I'm scared. Yeah, like their policy was like as though you were a prisoner of war. That yep. was their gym towel policy. Like, yeah. And um, and then the joke I wrote down is well. I never forgot my towel again, so maybe it worked. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm also like they're they're um, to the point of like I never forgot my towel again. They are um, making uh, the uh, legacy of Catholic schools and Catholic churches <sighs> knock on your door. <laughs> it's funny. That is so inappropriate. It's shocking. It should be that another student hands you paper towels, not an adult. <laughs> But Ooh, even that is dude. mad. I mean, that's madness too. Another yeah, student would be also be madness. You just have towels. <laughs> just have towels. <laughs> oh my god! I'm like my fucking dad or great uncle Harry. I'm like, uh, that's so gross. Have towels. Yeah, and then I have this, gross, which is Mike. I, I okay. So then I have this. I realized recently that I say hi to pretty much everyone yes. in life. Yes, I love unless it. Unless I realize that my physical presence might be threatening to that person. So if it's love like it. a child or a small woman. So the other day I went <laughs> to say hi to a person and I like mid high realized it was a small woman. And so I just go, hi, like I whispered <laughs> it and then I looked at the ground and then I realized that's worse. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? <laughs> she just has a, oh, you're not supposed to say like crazy person, but like a crazy person walking toward her instead of like a friendly man.
Yeah, it's like, I feel like the degree to which I'm attempting to, uh, the degree to which I'm attempting to have social interactions go okay, um, is, uh, jarring my own social interactions mm, yeah you know what i mean for sure. your self your awareness of it yeah you're so aware you're unaware okay wait just a pitch is that like that joke and could go somewhere where who you thought you might be threatening to like hurts you what do you mean by that this is like too contrived and made up but like you know imagine a scenario in which um you didn't say hi to a kid but then they mugged you <laughs> that's funny <laughs> you know what i mean you think you're so fucking hulking <laughs> Right. And then they're like stronger than you or a small woman or whatever. No, absolutely. Yeah. Just a pitch. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, I call that the high whisper fade away. Hi. The high. fade away. Hi. So terrifying. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, that's it's funny like also is that you movie. seem more like you're about to um put her in your car. Yeah, I know. You should you're have right. just said hi. Oh my god, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. I seem more like I'm about to put her in my car. I should have just said hi. Hi. Mm -hmm. Do you say hi to people, strangers? Constantly. You do, yeah. Fully constant. It's interesting. I, I think it's so New York, actually. To say hi. Yeah. Hey. Hey. You know, just constant. Yeah. Do you have any, one last one? Let me see. Now I know your code. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Terrible. This is really sex forward, but a joke about... Um, when I'm, I'm not even gonna look at you while I say it. Giving head is getting head. Okay. Because it like stops me from thinking. <laughs> and it's like, I'm, I'm getting head. Oh, I like that. It's clearing my head. I like that. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there, I think there'd have to be more to it. But I like the premise. Yeah, it's funny if it's like I'm like, the premise of it is like it's almost like a Buddhist sex thought. You know what I mean? Like it's it's <gasps> like it's, it's, like, it's, it's like a saying. So Buddhist. That's well, so it funny. is. It's it's yes, it's like yes. an oral sex Buddhist saying or something. I have the note for it actually. Now that I've broken the seal, I can tell you the note of it. Okay. When I'm when I'm giving head, I'm getting head. It it shuts me the fuck up, which I appreciate. <laughs> it shuts up my thoughts. Only when I love the person. <laughs> Plenty of BJ's where I'm ma making a grocery list. Oh my gosh. It's like I'm going to do a sex scene now. And in order to be able to conclude said sex scene, I'll just finish this up. But if I love the person, giving head is getting head. Oh, I love that. Yeah, maybe there's a sweet twist. Well, I think also like you could go into the grocery list. You could uh -huh, be like uh -huh. puffins. <laughs> mangoes you know what i mean like there's something to the specificity of the grocery list yeah yeah puffins is hilarious <laughs>The last thing we do is hold, working out for a cause. And if there's a nonprofit that you like, I know you work with a lot of nonprofits. Yeah. Um, we'll contribute to them. We'll link to them in the show notes. Encourage listeners to contribute as well. Oh, you know what I love is out of the closet. Out of the closet. You know, out of the closet on Atlantic. They like take, um, uh, uh, it's kind of like a housing works. Oh, great. Where they, you know, will take stuff but also take donations and they provide with with like clothing that they sell you can like donate clothes or whatever to them and with clothing that they sell they'll provide um uh health care for the queer community and specifically i think like hiv and aids testing that's fantastic well we'll contribute to them we will link to them in the show notes and thank you alana for coming on the show i'm i'm i took so much pleasure in this conversation Aww. i appreciate it so much I what a joy <laughs> <laughs>